Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach. And today I'm going to be talking about how to become a lone wolf, um, you know, a guide to, you know, having, you know, this peace inside of you that you're happy to be alone, even though you may be open to um, meeting new people and making new friends and meeting new romantic opportunity, you know, having new romantic opportunities. Because a lone wolf doesn't mean that you're completely secluded from society, from everyone. It just means that you have a very selective group of people in your life and you're very selective about the people that you hang out with. So, you know, I made a video about this sort of thing, um, about having high standards when you're dating. So I highly recommend that you go and watch that one because it not only does it apply to dating, but it also can apply to friendships as well. You know, you want to be very selective by the people that you hang out with because I don't know who said it originally. I think I may have heard it from Tony Robbins first. And that is, you know, you are most like the five people that you spend most of your time with. So you've got to really take a look at the five people you spend most of your time with and think, are these people good influences on me? Do I respect them? Do they have respectable jobs? Do they behave respectively? You know, um, you know, uh, do I, you know, want to be like them? You know, um, are they some people I admire? Because you want to spend your time with people that you admire, or at least that you admire qualities in them it doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to be like them or want to be like them but do you at least respect them as a person um or do you find everything that you do with these people who these you know these five people do you think that they're stupid do they do things that are not good for themselves do they drink too much do they eat too much you know are they respectable would you like to be them right because if you spend a lot of time with these five people you will start to emulate them whether or not you are aware of it or not it's just something that we unconsciously do because if you spend a lot of time with someone no matter who it is, they're going to start rubbing off on you. So you want to make sure that you're, you know, the people that you're around, you know, you're you're getting good things from them. You're developing good habits from them because you are going to emulate them whether you, you know, like that or not, basically, and whether you like them or not, whether you respect them or not, because you will start to become more like the people you hang around with the most. So, you know, I had a lot of trouble with this because I was like, oh no, when I first heard this, I was going through, you know, I didn't, I didn't necessarily have the greatest friends. Um, a lot of them had bad habits. Um, a lot of them there were people that I just didn't respect. Um, they were people that I didn't want to be like. Like, I didn't want to be like these people in 10 years or whatever it was. Like, I didn't want to be like them um, because of, you know, they drank too much or they had other bad habits. So, you know, um, what you've got to do then is if you don't have those people, which is exactly what I had when I started learning this kind of stuff, was I thought, well, okay, well, I can't surround myself with people that I respect. So I'm going to have to just search for people that I respect and listen to their audiobooks, listen to their podcasts, um, listen to their seminars, um, and just surround myself with people that I wanted to be like, um, even if they weren't in my like physical vicinity. At least I could listen to their podcasts. At least I could watch their videos. At least I could read their books. Um, at least I could, you know, watch their lectures and things like that. So, you know, it's... You know, so you've got to do that if you don't have the people that you want around you that you, you know, want to emulate, that you want to be like. And a lot of people don't have that. So search for them if you feel like you can't find friends and people like that. Um, and I guess it's the same with a romantic partner as well. Like you want to be with someone, either that you admire what they do, even if you don't really want to get involved with what they do, or they're someone that you like or would like to be like right? Don't date someone, don't, you know, try to get committed to someone who you don't respect, who is doing things that are the exact opposite of what you personally value. So that's kind of what it means to be a lone wolf. Like you stay alone until you find that group of people that you really admire <clears throat> and start surrounding yourself with those kinds of people. And you stay single until you find someone who you really like and respect, whether it's because they're similar to you or they do things that you just find admirable, right? Um, and you know that that's the kind of person that you want to be with. You want to be with someone who you value, who you respect, who at least is doing respectable things with their life that you like, basically, and that aligns with you, whatever that may be. Because obviously, what I want is probably going to be different from what you want. So it's all, it's obviously all down to you and what you feel like you would like in a partner and in your friendships. Okay. So basically, the, what this comes down to is not having unnecessary people in your life, not having unnecessary friends just because you're desperate to have friends. 
because this was something that I definitely went through, especially when I was a teenager and in my early adult years. Like, I would, I was so desperate to have friends that I'd be friends with anybody, right? And a lot of these people turned out to be complete lowlifes. And, you know, it got to a point, like, I was just hanging out at this bar with these people who, you know, they were all on the dole. Um, they were, you know, they had bad attitudes, they had bad drinking problems. All of them were pretty much overweight. And, you know, it just got to a point where I was like, I just got sick of it. I was like, why, why am I surrounded with these people? Now, they were nice people, but they just wasn't what I wanted to be friends with. Like, I wanted to find people that I could, I wanted to be like, and I just didn't want to be like these people. I didn't want to be at this bar all the time, like what these people were. I didn't want to be drinking all the time, like what these people were. I didn't want to be eating junk food all the time, like what these people were, you know? And, you know, I could easily see myself going down a very slippery slope into a place where I could end up like one of these people, right? And I got sick of it. I was like, why are all these people in my life? Like, I don't want these people around me. Um, and I just, I just thought, look, I'm, I just won't have any friends, right? I just won't have any friends. And I'll just, I'm just gonna, you know, listen to people that I admire online, on the internet, you know, listen to other coaches and things like that. And I'm just gonna, you know, just consume myself with this sort of content and do my own thing. I'd rather have no friends and just have role models on the internet than have in low life friends that I didn't want to be like and hang out with them just because I was desperate for friends. Right, so you've got to be selective like that. So you've got to see what's right for you and what's good for you. Um, and then acting accordingly. And if you don't have any, anyone in your life right now, then do what I did and find people online. Like, uh, I'll just give you a few people that I have really helped me. Uh, most recently, one of my favourite people has been um, David Goggins. An even more recent one, and his book Keep Hammering is really, really good. Um, and that is about Cameron Haynes. You know, listening to people like that. Um, you know, Tony Robbins was a big one for me. Jim Rohn was another big one for me um, the, at the beginning of my journey. Um, and also Dr. Wayne Dyer, who I've learned the most from and who has changed my life in a very, very profound way and was probably the, the first person to actually super change my life in a really amazing way. Um, so that was my, so that recently that's been my five people. Um, of course I have some good friends now as well, which is good. And I'm just very, very selective of those people. Um, I'm happy with my family relationships. I'm obviously very happy in my marriage as well. So life is a lot better now, definitely than what it was like maybe five or six, seven years ago. Okay. So no unnecessary people, right? Um, so another thing, you know, to become a lone wolf, you know, you need to learn to enjoy your own company. Because obviously, you know, when I started to like not hang out with certain people anymore um, and deciding that I just wanted to be on my own, basically, um, it was it was difficult, you know, because, you know, you know it, was, it was nice to have friends. It was nice to have people to hang out with. It was nice to have something to do. So what I had to do then was I had to learn to enjoy my own company, which was easier when I had lots of like podcasts to listen to, audio books, lectures, reading lots of books, those kinds of things. When I found like a good group of people that I could follow good group of um, really lovely guys, actually, um, from, you know, these people that I've just listed. Um, so it was really cool having those people to, like, listen to and just, um, you know, just drown in their content, basically. Um, so that was really cool. Um, so learning to enjoy your own company, though, isn't just about that, though. It's about, like, finding things that you like to do when you're alone. So, you know, um, you know having hobbies, having interests, having skills that you want to learn, um, having a projects, um, it may be the case that you have a career that you really like, or perhaps, you know, you, you, you don't really like your career. So now maybe you'll think about changing it. Obviously you want to stay in your current job until you find that new career for yourself, but you know, always searching for something better for you that you can make you, your more, life more fulfilled and more peaceful. Um, and you, that you can be happy about that. You can be proud about, because basically what you want to do is you want to be able to look in the mirror and be proud of who you are. Right. And not a lot of people feel that way when they look in the mirror. But you have to get to a place where you, you know, you've got to try at least to get to a place where you feel a lot more proud of yourself. And it may be the case that you just write a few little goals that you can accomplish each week. And then when you accomplish them, then that will give you a sense of pride and things like that. Um, but it's all about learning to enjoy your own company, not being afraid to basically go out and just treat yourself to like a cup of coffee on your own, doing things on your own, go to the cinema by yourself, whatever it may be. 
having projects that you can do after work maybe you've got you want to have like a side business or a side hustle that you're doing you know like perhaps you want to create like a, a tiktok you know doing i don't know like woodwork or something i don't know what your personal interests are but you know it's all about finding something that you're really passionate about in some, there's something that makes you feel really inspired like something that gives you like goosebumps right having that is an amazing uh feeling and um i think if you do that then and you start to enjoy your own time enjoy your own time alone because a lot of people don't this is why you see a lot of people go from one relationship to another so for example you know they'll break up with someone because they're afraid of going alone and because they're insecure they'll try and find a new relationship immediately because they don't like being single and they just don't like being with their own thoughts basically that they'd rather be with other people than on their own because they don't like who they are when they're alone so just finding things that you like to do on your own that you can fill your time with um can really really help and also it makes you more mysterious as well because if you're dating um, and your whole life is about like the person that you're dating then you're going to be messaging them all the time you're going to be texting them all the time because your love life is your main part of your life this is the main thing in your life because that's the only thing you keep on thinking about and it may be the case you have a big crush on someone or you're not over your ex or something and you keep on obsessing over them but if you've got things that you like to do that you know you can fill your time with um, that you enjoy um, it, it makes it less likely that you're going to obsess, that you're going to just keep on thinking about them because you've got other things that you're doing, right? So you want to fill up your time with that and enjoy being on your own and enjoying your own company. And the universe works in weird ways. It seems like when you first, when you start to really enjoy being on your own and you don't mind being alone, in fact, it kind of, it's kind of like your peaceful place. And that's when you'll get into a relationship and then you'll no longer have that space anymore. Um, but you know, well, I say that, but you know, you can always make time for that. Like I said, you know, in, in, in previous videos, you know, you can, you know, you need to spend a little bit of time apart from your partner. You don't have to be with them all the time. It's good that you have interests outside of the relationship and things like that. So, um, that's my advice on that. Um, so, you know, another thing is, you know, you want to be productive and not busy. So, you know, filling your time up with things, you know, is good, but make sure that they're things that are productive and it's not just things like, uh, I don't know, you know, keeping you busy. Like, for example, let's say you're playing video games or something. Now, unless you're like an esports player and you're not earning money from playing video games, then, you know, maybe it's something that you should only do occasionally rather than just doing, just doing it just to spend time, just to waste time. Now, if you're going to, you know, you know, want to be a lone wolf, and you want to be someone who like seems like this is a really strong person who doesn't mind being on their own and things like that. Then I think you know being productive instead of busy is um, the one of the best routes to get there because you're actually working towards something. You're actually getting stronger because you know you you've got the maybe like these little disciplines you know that you're trying to do like perhaps um, you know you work out for like half an hour a day. You work on your business for a couple of hours a day or whatever it is that your hobby is. You know doing things like that. Um, you know, you're doing something to move yourself forward rather than just being busy where you're not really doing anything productive. Because being productive, in my opinion, is when you're doing something that is leading you to a place where you want to be. So, and being busy is just when you're just wasting time, like you're watching Netflix or you're playing video games and it's not, you're not, you're not doing anything to attain your goals. So it's good to have goals. It's good to have things that you want to do. And so you want to be aiming towards those so that you can have a productive life and not just a busy life you want to be doing things that are trying to move you forward to where you want to be so you know that's a good question to ask yourself you know where do you want to be in like five years time ask yourself that you know or where do I want to be in a year's time if you want a more smaller goal right and then you work towards that you spend your time working towards those things you want to be productive not busy so thank you so much for watching. That's kind of like my guide on how to become a lone wolf. It's a video that you may want to come back to a few more times um, over the, you know, the years um, if you want to, obviously. <laughs> um, and I hope it's helped you out. So thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to get in touch with me personally and you're like coaching with me, then please go to www.christineloveridge.com. Thank you so much for watching and I shall talk to you again very soon. Goodbye, guys.